Hello everyone, this is Grace. It is May the 2nd, 2022, and we are continuing our study on the Sabbath. And in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the scriptures and the examples for cooking. And um, let's go ahead and get started. So, Exodus 16, 21. Hold on, let's go back. Now we read through this, I think in the last in the last study so we won't read through this we'll just yeah we'll read through these three verses and they gathered every morning every man according to his eating and it came to pass that on the sixth day they gathered twice as much bread two omers for one man and all the rulers of the congregation came and told Moses and he said unto them this is that which the Lord has said tomorrow is the rest of the holy sabbath unto the Lord make that which ye will bake today and see that which ye will seethe and that which remaineth over lay up for you to be kept until the morning. This is the verse that caused this study. <laughs> By the way, <laughs> the last study that I was doing, I think it was on the Exodus, I mean on the Equinox. I came across this verse and I read this verse and I was like, wait a second. This says you can cook on the Sabbath. <laughs> That's what it says. And surprisingly enough, we're going to read through it again in a second. Surprisingly enough, I went to Google and I typed in something like, can you cook on the Sabbath or something like that. And on the very first page, there was a selection that I clicked on and it was telling you, yes, apparently this is known. <laughs> I had no idea. And there was just a short article and it gave this verse and it also gave this next verse here, Exodus 12:16. And in the first day there shall be a holy convocation, and in the seventh day there shall be a holy convocation to you. No manner of work shall be done in them, save that which every man must eat, that only may be done of you. You can cook on the Sabbath. But let's read this verse which started all of this. And he saith unto them, This is that which the Lord hath said, Tomorrow is the rest of the holy Sabbath unto the Lord. Bake that which you will bake today and see that which you will see. So this is the topic. The topic is what you bake and what you see. And it says, and that which remaineth over. What's going to remain over? That which you did not bake and that which you did not see. <laughs> that which remaineth over lay up for you to be kept until the morning. It is actually a given in this sentence. It is a given that you were going to be cooking the next day. It, it acts upon the presumption that you have to cook every day. <laughs> That's the way it's structured. <laughs> it doesn't tell you that which remaineth over, cook the next day. No, it says that which remaineth over, lay up for you to be kept until the morning. Bake that which you will bake for today. And see that which you will see. And that which is left over, you keep it until the morning. Now there is another scripture up here that seems to... Hold on. Here we go. This is the scripture that I saw on a video. I just could not believe how much, how many videos and stuff there were about this. And I had never even heard it. <laughs> I had never even heard it before. Until I came across that scripture and then looked it up on the on the internet. This is the thing which the Lord has commanded. Gather of thee every man according to his eating, and omer for every man, according to the number of your persons. Take ye every man for them which are in his tents. No, this isn't the one. Here we go. This is the word prepare. Okay. Let's read from here. Then said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day. Why? That I may prove for them whether they will walk in my law or no. And it shall come to pass that on the sixth day they shall prepare that which they bring in, and it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. This word prepare doesn't mean cook. It, I just, it just gave you the definition of cook down here in verse 23 it just gave you the definition of cook 
Bake that which you will bake today and see that which you will see. Prepare doesn't mean cook. It doesn't even give the implication of cook. It says it shall come to pass that on the sixth day they shall prepare that which they bring in. And it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. Hold on. It's going to come eventually. Hold on. It's just moving slow. There we go. <laughs> Probably to be erect. That is stand. For, did I get the right word? Okay. I got the right. Well, let's take a look here. Probably to be erect. That is stand perpendicular. Hence. Causatively to set up in a great variety of applications, whether literal, fix, prepare, apply, or figuratively, figuratively to a point. Render, sure, proper, or prosperous. It's telling you that you have food for that day. That's, what it's, that's all it's saying. And it shall come to pass that on the sixth day, they shall prepare, they're going to have food for that day, that which they bring in. And it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. If it was all for that day to be prepared, it wouldn't be twice as much. Or it wouldn't be appointed. Hold on. Oh, man. Okay. To be erect, to stand, that is to stand perpendicular, hence to set up to set up or establish to a point okay so let's consider what's said here first he says I have to read it then said the Lord unto Moses behold I, behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day that I may prove them whether they will walk in my law or no and it shall come to pass. Now let's just work with the information that we have. Okay, We already know the law so it's easy for us to read into what's going on here. And that's what we do. Because we already know what he's talking about. But we, we just want to work with what it's saying now. Okay, He's saying he wants to prove them. And it, say, and it says, and it shall come to pass that on the sixth day. Remind you, they don't know what's going on. <laughs> they don't know. And it shall come to pass that on the sixth day they shall prepare or appoint or set up that which they bring in. So on the sixth day, and it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. It doesn't say they're going to cook it for two days and they're going to have some left over, this, that, and the other. That doesn't come until after it, the sixth day. They have no idea. They just know that they're supposed to take the food and set it up for, and it's going to be twice as much. <laughs> it, the mystery isn't solved until after the sixth day. When Moses says to them, and the Lord said, hold on. And he said unto them, this is that which the Lord has said. Tomorrow is the rest of the Holy Sabbath unto the Lord. Bake that which you will bake today. Now they get the instructions. Now they understand what's going on. Now they know what to do. And Moses spells it out for them. Which he couldn't do before because maybe he didn't fully understand it either. So he tells them, bake that which you will bake today and see that which you will see. And that which remaineth over, lay up for you to be kept until the morning. The topic is not... The topic is baking and seething. What remaineth over is that which has not been baked and seethed. The presumption is, is that you know that you have to cook and prepare your food each day. Why? Because we have a scripture saying, um, why? Because people eat every day, basically. And you have a scripture saying that it's perfectly fine to do this. 
on the holy convocation, which is Sabbath is. In the first day there shall be a holy convocation, and in the seventh day there shall be a holy convocation. To you, no manner of work, employment, shall be done in them, save that which every man must eat. That only may be done unto you. Let's do a quick comparison for those of you who have not seen. I'm not sure what that verse was up there. Let's go to verse 6 and see real quick. Okay, well, that's okay. Let's look at Leviticus, Leviticus 23 so we can do a quick comparison. Um, the seventh day of the Sabbath is in holy convocation. You shall do no work therein. No manner of work shall be done, save that which every man must eat. That only may be done. Holy convocation. Okay. So let's go on to the next verse. We spent a lot of time on that. So let's go on and look at the examples. At that time, Jesus went on the Sabbath day through the corn, and his disciples were hungered. And he began to pluck the ears of corn and to eat. But when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto him, Behold, thy disciples do that which, which is not lawful to do upon the Sabbath day. And... And he said unto them, What man shall there be among ye? Okay, wait a second. That's not pertaining to this study. There is a law which says, When thou comest into standing corn of thy neighbor, then thou mayest pluck the ears with thine hand, but thou shalt not move a sickle unto thy neighbor's standing corn. Okay, we're going to go through, and we're going to go back, well, we're going to go back and read. Hold on. Oh, I went forward instead of backwards. We need to go backwards and read through this again. Okay, so, but before I, before we look at this, I wanted to say this. If you, when you read through Leviticus, what you'll notice is that there are a lot of exceptions for the poor. The poor get to do this. They get to go through, and they get to. Um, you don't get to go through a second time and harvest your your um, your crop the poor get to eat from what's left over for free and during during one of the Sabbath either the Jubilee or the Sabbath year or something like that the poor get to eat from from the land because they don't have food that they can store up so there are a lot of exceptions made in the law for the poor and for the needy and, and things such as that, okay? So we want to keep that in mind as we read through this. Because we're going to read through all of it this time. At that time, Jesus went on the Sabbath day through the corn, and his disciples were and hungered, and began to pluck the ears of corn and to eat. But when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto him, Behold, thy disciples do that which is not lawful to do upon the Sabbath day. Now, he does, they don't say what is not lawful to do. They don't say if plucking the corns and eating it, is unlawful or they're not clear but we know that you can eat on the Sabbath so the only thing that really fits as all as unlawful as far as my studies can see is that they weren't paying for this corn and it was unlawful for the man for the man who owned the field to provide that corn free of uh, provide that corn free of charge that's the only thing that I could see that they, they would have had to pay for it. Okay? But when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto him, Behold, thy disciples do that which is not lawful to do upon the Sabbath day. And we have a the buying and selling part is coming next. So if that's not clear to you, watch that part first and then come back and look at these scriptures and it will be clear. But he said unto them, Have ye not read... What David did when he was hungered, and they that were with him, how they entered into the house of God, and did eat the showbread, which was not lawful for him, them, him to eat, neither for them which were with him, but only for the priests. Or, that, or have ye not read 
in the law how that on the Sabbath day the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless. But I say unto you that in this place is one greater. It's, it's one greater than the temple. So he's talking about himself here. He's saying he's working in the world rather than the temple. <laughs> and if you had known, but if ye had known what this meaneth, I will have mercy and not sacrifice, ye would not have condemned the guiltless. He's saying whatever law they're speaking of, because it's not it was not wrong for them to pluck corn from the garden because they hungered. It was wrong because they caused the other man to work. <laughs> the owner of the cornfield to work on the Sabbath day. This is the only thing that I can see that could possibly be wrong. But that's neither here nor there. Whatever the accusation, it was wrong because they were out doing the work of the Lord. God, um, Jesus is greater than the temple. He was out with his disciples doing the work of the Lord and they were perfectly entitled to eat from that field because of it. They were entitled not only as the priest, but as the, because it was an emergency. They, they don't. No one cares about your sacrifices if you're doing wrong. You don't. It be, it's like the Good Samaritan all over again. <laughs> How are you going to do someone wrong? You see a man that's hungry. You overlook him so that you can go to the temple and make a sacrifice. No. So this is why he says, but if you had known what this meaneth, I will have mercy and not sacrifice, you would not have condemned the guiltless. For the Son of Man is the Lord even of the Sabbath day. He is the Lord of the Sabbath day, greater than the temple. So whatever they were accusing them of, they were guiltless. It was an emergency. They were hungry. They were out doing the works of God. Therefore, they were guiltless. And it was not. It was not because they were because they were eating corn. It wasn't. If they had said it there, we could address it. But it's not said. And since there's no rule against plucking and eating corn, against cooking on the Sabbath, you can't put that there because you want it to be there. This is where we get all of these problems. Everyone just wants, for some reason, for there not to be cooking on the Sabbath. It's supposed to be a celebration. It's supposed to be a celebration. You're supposed to be able to do the things that you do during a celebration. <laughs> oh, let's get past that. And ye shall keep it until the fourteenth day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. You know, I want to point this out. Let me see how many more scriptures. I have a few more scriptures. I want to point this out. I'm not sure if that's why I put this in here. But let me point this out real quick. The very first celebration of the year is the Passover. On the day of the Passover, the first thing you do is you kill a lamb. <laughs> You kill that lamb, you clean that lamb, you cook it, then you eat it. And then what do you do right after that? You clean your house. <laughs> this is the first holiday of the year that brings the year in. And you cook and you clean. And then you go on with your celebration. <laughs> I don't know if that's why I put that scripture in there. We'll find out though. Let's continue on. And the children of Israel journeyed from Ramses unto... Oh, I put that in there because it shows cooking on the Sabbath. And then it, it's, um, it's repeated down here at the bottom with unleavened bread. And the children of Israel journeyed from Ramses unto Sukkoth, about 600,000 on foot that were men besides the children. And they baked unleavened cakes of the dough which they had brought from out of Egypt. And it was not leavened, because they were thrust out of Egypt and could not tarry. Neither had they prepared for themselves any victual. So for seven days, they ate unleavened bread. They didn't prepare themselves any victuals, so they had to cook the cakes. They had to cook on the Sabbath in order to do this. They had to. Because it's a seven-day celebration. And there is a holy convocation on the first day, and a holy convocation on the last day. 
cooking and more cooking and cooking still because <laughs> they had to eat during the week <laughs> well the, the the week though wasn't a holy convocation only the first and last days and Moses gathered all of the congregation of the children of Israel together and said unto them these are the words which the Lord has commanded that ye should do them. Six days shall work be done, but on the seventh day there shall be unto, be to you in holy day a Sabbath of rest to the Lord. Whosoever doeth any work therein shall be put to death, and it is employment again. Ye shall kindle no fire throughout your habitations upon the Sabbath. Again, <laughs> we are reading into this cooking, and that's why I put it in here. I, I didn't, it, it really doesn't belong here, it belongs in work. Um, because it's talking about work but we from, we use this to show that there's no cooking because it says kindle no fire throughout your habitations on the Sabbath day let me tell you something the Jew um, I don't know if all Jews this, do this but the Jewish people they um, hire someone to come into their house and turn on their lights why? because that switch kindles a spark before it turns on the light they have automatic switches for their heat because they can't turn up their heat because it kindles a spark. There's all kinds of things that they go through in order to not make a fire, to not kindle a fire on the Sabbath. Now you can say what you will. You can say if it's, it's extreme if you want to, but at least they're consistent. You come into your house, you turn on your TV, but you won't turn on your stove. And there's a power light on your stove. There's a fire in there all the time. I think the only thing that if you have a um, a stove with fire, not an electric stove, I think it just opens up a valve. <laughs> you'll turn up your heat, you'll turn on your heater, you'll do all kinds of things that kindle a spark. But then when it comes to cooking, oh no. You draw the line there. We are, we're, we're a bunch of Pharisees. It's not just you believe me, it's me too. <laughs> I didn't know we're just a bunch of Pharisees to a lesser degree we're not out there pushing our doctrine on other people but yeah we've become a bunch of Pharisees to ourselves this kindle no fire we already know from a previous study that fire means wrath you can go back and look at that study if you like but this kindle does not mean burn this kindle means to consume Or to, to create, to create a cons consumption here. To cause to be consumed is, is the best. Um, to consume by fire or by eating is to cause it to be consumed. Um, to become brutish or to be brutish. To cause to, to eat up. To cause to be set on fire. Something like, it's a cause. And I have some scriptures in here. It doesn't mean it. Um, it what it's saying is that you shall not cause wrath. Of, it's, you, it's saying you should not bring wrath upon yourself. It's you shall not cause fire throughout your habitations or wrath to fall upon you throughout your habitations on the Sabbath day. That's what it's saying. But let's look at the examples that I put in here. And the fire upon the altar shall be burning in it. Okay, so this is the word for kindle here, the H1197. So you see burning is a different word. Let's read this. And the fire upon the altar shall be burning in it. It shall not be put out, and the priest shall burn or cause to be consumed wood on it every morning, and lay the burnt offering in order upon it, and he shall burn thereon the fat and the peace offering. So you see there's a difference between burning and lighting the fire or whatever <laughs> and when the people complained it displeased the Lord and the Lord heard it and his anger was kindled a different word for kindle and the fire of the Lord burnt with this is the word here and the fire of the Lord caused to be consumed among them was consumed was caught was caused to be consumed among them and consumed them 
that were in the uttermost parts <laughs> of the camp. You can read that out. You can read that later. It, believe me, it works out. This is proper and so is this. And that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death because he has spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you out of the house of bondage to thrust thee out of the way which the Lord thy God commanded thee to walk in. So thou shalt thou put away the evil or cause to be consumed away the evil from the midst of thee. Consume away the evil from the midst of thee. And this is examples for fire. Therefore shall the Lord of hosts send among the fat ones leanness, and under his glory he shall kindle, a different word for kindle, a burning like the burning of a fire. Fire means wrath. What's being said, hold on, let's read this first and we'll go back real quick. Behold, all ye that kindle a fire, a different word for kindle, that compass yourselves around about with sparks, walk in the light of your fire and in the sparks that ye have kindled. This is the word for kindle here, that ye have caused to be, that have caused a consumption. This shall ye have of my hand. Ye shall lie down in sorrow. Why are you going to lie down in sorrow? Because you've brought a consumption amongst up, upon yourself. It's the same wording, it's just, I mean, it's the same words, it's just worded differently. It's just phrased differently in this verse. And I think that was the last one, yeah, so let's go back. What it's saying is, six. when it's, it says... You shall kindle no fire throughout your habitations. It's saying, don't break the Sabbath and bring wrath upon yourself. That's all it's saying. If you break the Sabbath, then you're going to bring wrath upon yourself. Nowhere does it say you cannot cook. That must be read into this. If you kindle a fire all day, every day, there's sacrifices made on every day holy of the Holy Convocation. And in the morning and evening of every day, <laughs> there was a sacrifice made. Fire was kindled every single day. Why would this be a rule? Why? This doesn't even make sense if you think about it. If you're cold... You're going to want to kindle a fire. Anybody that threw a log on the flame was kindling a fire. The, pre the priest did this every day. It was a command. We, did, we do it every day. We have heat running. No, we're not like um, the, the Jewish people who will not touch that thermostat. But we get cold. <laughs> We get cold. You should not be eating cold food on the Sabbath day. You can cook. You can cook. And you can buy and sell too. And we're going to address that in the next video. So, I will see you there.